The first few months of ownership was, to say the least, very worrisome. The first issue that I had wasn't as bad, but as I continue to share the history with my Red Sport, it does get progressively worse, so make sure to stick around. The first conundrum that I had was not being able to reset the oil maintenance interval, and for the life of me, I just couldn't reset it. And being that this car was and still is a certified pre-owned vehicle, I wanted to make sure everything got fixed on the warranty before I started modifying it. So around late February, I took the car into the dealership that I purchased it at and the service advisor told me that the ECU had to be replaced. So I waited about two days for the ECU to arrive from Japan and I picked up the car and everything was perfectly fine. A couple weeks later, I started hearing my belt squeaking very faintly. So I took it to my local dealership to perform the TSB. They aligned the compressor, replaced the pulley, the tensioner, and the belt. Everything was fine after that. Raining season had just begun and this is when my third problem arose. So whenever it would start raining, my A-pillar would start getting wet in two spots to the point where it would drip down to the floorboard. So I took it into my local dealership and they told me that the sunroof drains were clogged. However, this isn't something that is taken care under warranty. So after talking to them, going back and forth out of courtesy, they took care of me and I didn't have to pay anything out of pocket. Now, I took it back home after it was cleaned. A few days later, it started raining and yeah, it started dripping again. So this is when everything just starts becoming a complete night. One day on the way back from the beach, I was gapping this 335i and that's when I realized the car started overheating. I got home and I looked underneath the hood and I saw the reservoir was completely dry. So I had Infinity tow the car over to their dealership. The next day over, when they opened, they saw, they visually saw that there was a leak on the turbo side of the cooling gasket so what they did was replace the the gasket they just refilled the system and sent me right home a couple days later i saw that the temperature started getting warm again and that's when i opened up the hood and i saw that it was dry once again so on the way to infinity to drop off the car for the cooling issue it started raining and you wouldn't imagine what started happening the a pillar started getting wet once again at this point i'm very upset and I dropped the car off at the dealership and I'm trying to keep my composure, but you can tell by the frustration in my voice that this is going for way too long. So what they did was keep the car overnight and they kept the systems under pressure to make sure that there wasn't any more visual leaks and to see if the pressure dropped. And to our surprise, they didn't find anything. What they told me was that the coolant levels fluctuate, which is normal, which I know coolant expands under heat, but this time it's just completely vanishing. It's going below the minimum. I also asked them if they bled the system and they said, yes, the mechanic himself told me that he bled the system properly. So being that the car's bumper has been off so many times, I had them replace the bumper clips. At the end of the day, the bumper clips didn't even help because the bumper itself was worn out at the tabs. And in regards to the supposed sunroof leak, what they did was realign the drains and they passed it through the car wash and they couldn't replicate the dripping. At this point, I just ended up taking the car and a few days later, it started overheating once again. I was so upset that I've taken the car to Infinity multiple times for the same problem. And after they told me that it's fixed when in fact, it never got fixed. And I just told myself I'd never take my car back to that dealership ever again. And to this day, I haven't. At this time, after being fed up with my local dealership, I reached out to someone who had a VR30 before and he connected me with a service advisor who told me that they can help me out. I swung by this dealership, which is over two hours away from my house, and he assured me that he will take care of all my issues. That's when I first made videos regarding the overheating problems that I was having. He told me that he was gonna replace the engine. He also wanted to see if I had a JB4 because most of those water leaks that happen on the floorboard is because of the JB4 where the grommet gets pushed out and they don't replace it. So water does get through the firewall. But my car was completely stock at the time and the previous owner was a very old man. So he told me he would replace the sunroof drains and the blend door actuator was also replaced for the AC. Three weeks later, I picked up the car with the brand new engine and the turbo. I took the car home and immediately began modifying it. 
After I was done modifying it, literally the next day over, I went over to get Dino Tune by Racebox. I believe I only had like 200 miles on the engine at the time. Shortly after, I started hearing this weird, like, knocking rattling noise underneath the car while driving i tried to replicate it but i couldn't so i just ignored it in the next coming weeks i modified it a bit more by adding a bigger high pressure fuel pump and i replaced the injectors i went data logging at night and my belt said not today i assume when they installed the new engine that they didn't align the compressor. So you can figure this time is about 2 a.m. when I drove the car off the highway and I happened to make it to a gas station before the battery drained. It's now 9 a.m. and I get back to my car so I can replace the belt myself because I was supposed to go to the track later on. But then I noticed that not only did the belt shred, but the pulley was completely mutilated and i wasn't gonna pay 250 to 400 dollars to complete the whole job so i had infinity pick up the car and they towed it two hours back to the infinity where i got my engine replaced so at that time they replaced the pulleys the tensioner and the belt the funny thing is that i also had the car towed to them with a drag pack which was pretty hilarious so i picked up the car a week later and i was ready to go to the track a couple weeks have passed and it began to rain and you wouldn't imagine what happened the freaking water started dripping again and that tapping noise was also getting like very very annoying so i got under the car in hopes to find something loose and i found a clamp that was not fastened which the line went into the engine i'm not sure what it was luckily it just wasn't under pressure um but still that's not the contributing factor to why that noise is happening while i was driving so i took it in once again and i told them to please look over the entire car i also told them that the noise is happening more often in regards to the water leak obviously it has nothing to do with the sunroof drains at this point and because of the removal many many times with the headliner and some interior pieces they've already scratched my windshield tint which cost me over 250 dollars to install so i got my car back from the dealership and they told me that the windshield seal was the main reason why i was getting water in the car so i can honestly confirm right now that that completely fixed my water leak issue that i was having but the noise was not replicated and they couldn't really find that issue basically weeks have passed by now and i've been able to enjoy the car a lot more i was beating personal records at the track i basically started hearing a very weird whining noise towards the end of my track session literally the last pass on the way home i started hearing this whining noise get louder as i accelerate by the time i got home i looked underneath the car and i did see diff oil fluid off the side of the diff on the driver's side axle so i assumed it was the driver's axle seal that went bad so that's when i took the car back to the dealership over two hours away i got the car back i believe a week later and the moment i pulled off it started sounding very weird they fixed the seal but the noise was still there and as i was driving and i made a turn i felt this very nasty feeling where the axle or where the diff kind of grinded that was a red flag i literally went back to the dealership and i told them dude it's making weird noise and it just doesn't feel normal so i dropped off the car and mind you <laughs> the car is still on a freaking drag pack and they replaced the entire diff that to this day i'm gonna always tell that story i can't believe that actually happened where i went in there were mickey thompson's and a ford star uh, drag pack to get my diff replaced so a week later i picked up the car and it drove like a dream it literally drove like it's a brand new car so i decided to get home because that weird knocking tapping whatever noise was still happening so i decided to get under the car and while i was lifting up the car i noticed that they freaking curbed my nismos I was so upset. I literally called them and I told them, bro, like my wheels are curbed. You know, I they wanted to pretty much repair, do a light repair on the wheels. But for one, it's too far. And when I got under the car, I finally found the main reason to my clunking issues that I, that I was having. And it was because they left the main subframe nut completely loose. So after I got my car back from Infinity of they did the motor replacement i started getting a weird noise i kept hearing this weird 
rattle. Sometimes it kind of creaks. And now it's just gotten worse to the point where I, I need to go under the car again because I figured maybe I fucked up the transmission mount install or something. But look what I found loose. At this point, I'm at, like really upset with all the dealerships. I didn't want to take it back to fix my wheels. I didn't want to take it back to obviously tighten up the nut. I could do that myself. So basically I tightened up the nut and I looked over the entire car myself and everything seemed to be on point now. A couple things have happened since then. My spool high pressure fuel pump started leaking. So I had it sent in and I received it back literally in two days. It has leaked another time after that but that was because the fitting went loose and by the time i looked underneath the hood one of the fittings were completely gone so i'm assuming it wasn't tightened properly and it came loose because of the vibration of the engine the thing that has happened which i still haven't addressed is my pinion bearing going out i just think that that's kind of the weak link to this car when you're doing multiple hard digs at the track you know i've done one four one five sixty foot consecutively and I, I just think that's just a weak link so the reason why i assume that that's what's going bad is because when i accelerate the noise becomes much louder when you let go of the accelerator pedal it completely goes away so if the noise is coming out under load only that is said to be the pinion bearings i do have the parts i need to replace them i just need to find the time to do it i think that's going to be when i install the poor man's lsd which is the traction concepts kit that is for sale online so we will see if it takes the abuse from the track honestly i hope so i don't think it is but i have hope so basically what i've done to keep the wheel hop at bay so I prevent any further damage from happening to the diff is install the Pride diff brace. And I did make a pretty good comparison video between the Z1 and the Pride diff brace. So if you want to watch that, hit this video right here. Subscribe, motherfucker.